Dr. Napolitano, yeah. get in here. We need you to tell us what is going on. What do you make of the latest with this? Well, uh, you know, I think this is probably the tip of a prosecutorial iceberg, so to speak. Uh, it's a nightmare for Donald Trump because General Flynn was his constant companion on foreign policy and national security matters from June of 2015 till the time the president fired him in February of 2017. Uh, the downside for the government is that whatever testimony General Flynn provides is coming out of, out of the mouth of someone that the government itself has acknowledged is unworthy of belief because he's pleaded guilty, as we know, uh, to lying to the FBI. The downside to the president is, as one of you was just saying, this keeps the Russian thing, the Russian story, front and center at a time when the president is beginning to move towards the achievement right. of his uh, legislative agenda. That's a very but good General, point. Uh, General Flynn um, probably will be in the, undergoing the process of being debriefed by FBI agents in, in a painstakingly detailed way in the next couple of weeks. They're looking for evidence that leads to other evidence. By that, I mean they're looking for human beings who can testify so that General Flynn doesn't have to testify. Exactly, because you know, he's been proven not to tell the truth. Well, Correct. You can provide yeah. evidence to the government without going on the witness stand, and that's probably the role they see for him. Hey, Judge, now, the, the, we, we want to get Lisa Booth in here because she's got a quick question for you. Hi, Judge. Lisa. Hey, Judge. So question for you. Uh, we know that transition teams talk to foreign governments. So why does the conversations that Flynn had, wh why do those conversations matter? And what is that issue with the conversations that he allegedly had? That's a great question. The conversations that General Flynn had while he was uh, part of the transition team are of far less moment than any conversations he had during the campaign. I mean, at the time of the transition team, one would expect that the Trump foreign policy and national security people would begin to dip their toes in the water, so to speak, particularly after the president is inaugurated, but before uh, there's a new uh, secretary of state. So what happened during the transition time period, unless it is a cover up of what happened during the campaign, is far less problematic for the president today than what may have happened during the campaign. The portions of the plea agreement that I have seen go to conversations during the transition period, not during the campaign. All right, we're going to leave it there. Judge Andrew Napolitano, thank you for jumping on the phone and weighing in. Let's get some analysis now from Chris Wallace, anchor of Fox News Sunday out here at the Reagan Library. Chris, uh, you know, we can't emphasize enough what we don't know yet. And really, as John just pointed out, that's the ominous thing for the administration. Yeah, I, I think, though, here, there are other things that are ominous. We believe that, that Michael Flynn was liable, was in jeopardy on a variety of issues, including money that he had gotten from the Russians that he hadn't reported, money he'd gotten from the Turkish government that he hadn't reported. We expected a lot of that to be in any guilty plea or any indictment. Those didn't appear. It seems that Bob, Rob, Robert Mueller, the special counsel, went easy on Michael Flynn. Question, why? maybe because he thinks that Michael Flynn has good information and that he's gotten a promise of cooperation from Michael Flynn and he, he, there's a quid pro quo there. There's another point I think you have to emphasize. You cannot overstate how important Michael Flynn was in the early days throughout the campaign when a lot of the more senior respected foreign policy advisors weren't going to deal with Ronald Reagan because they didn't think he was going to be the nominee or the president. Michael Flynn was his right hand man on foreign policy and I've always thought that if there is anything between the president and the Russians, and we don't know that there is, I can't emphasize that enough, Michael Flynn could be the key figure. Yeah, Donald Trump. And the the thing about pre-campaign, you know, pre-election, uh, after he gets elected, now there's all this talk about whether Jared Kushner may have told Michael Flynn to reach out to the Russians and others uh, about this vote in the U.N. Security Council. Talk about that from a legal perspective. It's It wouldn't be criminal for them to reach out other than this law called the Logan Act. 1799, the Logan Act was passed when this was a very young union and there was concern about various founding fathers want to conduct their own foreign policy with, with various governments around the world. So the Logan Act basically said only the government can conduct foreign policy. It has never 
been prosecuted. It has never been enforced. So it certainly would be bad form when you have one president for the president-elect and his people underneath him to go talking to other governments. But the idea that you're going to be prosecuted for that, very, very unlikely. Having said that, why did Michael Flynn lie? And today he admitted he did lie to the FBI. Right. So do you think that this is going to take a long time, I guess, is the question? Well, we don't know. But but I, the fact that you've got Paul Manafort and Michael Flynn, two really key players in the Trump campaign, one was the top foreign policy advisor, one was for a period of time the campaign chairman, one has pled guilty and promised to cooperate, the other is fighting an indictment. Uh, we've gotten right up to the gates of the president and his family, and we don't know where it's going to go from here. Here at the Reagan Library, Fox News Sunday, this Sunday with a very special guest. We're going to be talking to two key people. First of all, the National Security Advisor, H.R. McMaster, and then as somebody who covered Ronald Reagan trips around the world, his Secretary of State during all of those meetings, George Shultz on the art of the deal. And man, I know the president knows about the art of the deal. So did George Shultz. That'll be fascinating. Chris, thanks. Thank you. My next guest says there is no news here. Let's bring in Fox News contributor and former Trump campaign surrogate Steve Cortez. So, Steve, you say no news here. Uh, well, then what are we talking about? Because you got General Flynn on the record now saying he lied uh, in instances that were important. Well, listen, here's what I'm saying. There's not news. I, I'm not saying that's not a newsworthy piece of information, but we already knew he lied. We knew he lied to the president, to the vice president. Right. That's why he was fired. Uh, so the fact that he lied to an FBI agent, if he's willing to fly, lie to the commander in chief, his commander in chief, certainly he's just as willing to lie to an FBI agent. So I think that uh, Mr. Flynn, look, after a lifetime of protecting and serving this country, including as an Obama official, uh, unfortunately, he really sullied that by making some very unfortunate decisions uh, around the transition time. But the fact that after the election, uh, he lied to FBI agents, or, or excuse me, he lied to them about what he did after the election. We are still so far away from collusion, and particularly any collusion that is tied directly to the president himself, that it's absurd. So I would say to the liberals out there and the, the critics of the president who keep calling this a bombshell, this isn't even a firecracker. Uh, you know, it's interesting to hear you say this, because the president on General Flynn last February had this to say. Because when I looked at the information, I said, I don't think he did anything wrong. If anything, he did something right. He was coming into office. He looked at the information. He said, huh, that's fine. That's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be. And he, he didn't just call Russia. He called and, and spoke to both ways. Uh, I think there were 30 some odd countries. He's doing the job. Steve, you were part of the team. Did you talk with the president or any of his senior officials about this going on? I, I mean, certainly uh, this investigation has taken a lot of time, a lot of resources, America's ta sure. tax dollars going forth. Did it ever come up? And what were those conversations like? No, it did, not, it did not with me. But, Harris, I'm not in the foreign policy wing of, you know, sort of Team Trump. So it's, it's natural that I would not be part of no, that conversation. No, but you had to but deal the, with these things as they were popping sure. up as, as matters course, and part of the transition team. Of course, of course. And look, I, w I would say this, too. The president is right that, of course, it's, it's prudent and smart for his future national security advisor to reach out to myriad countries around mm -hmm. the world to have conversations about future policy. Now, he shouldn't, because he was the president-elect, he shouldn't undermine the then-President Obama's policy overseas. So that's certainly some place you have to be very careful to not skirt that line. So what General Flynn did in terms of outreach, I don't think, was wrong. But he lied to the FBI, as he now admits, which was wrong. And more importantly to me, he lied to his superiors at the White House, which, again, though, is the reason that he was terminated. But I, yeah. I think, again, there's there's an obsession with Russia. There's a collusion delusion here. Uh, this election was not run because of Russia or because of any foreign country. It was won because of the incredible economic nationalist agenda of Donald Trump. And on the flip side, uh, the terrible corrupt, unlikable performance and candidate of Hillary Clinton. That's why this was one. Let's stop trying to rewrite history. Uh, one thing going forth, and, and I know this uh, just from talking with you previously, is that the president uh, has all of these agenda items that he wants to get done right now. You've got a legislative, we're on the precipice perhaps, of, of tax reform. And what do you say about this point with, with General Flynn and all of this? Do you see this as maybe speeding things up and getting this off the books? I mean, we don't know what Robert Mueller has, but what what is the perspective from the White House that you know of from working with this team? 
Right. Well, you know, I would say this, that uh, this is part of the problem of a special counsel, and I would say that about any special counsel, even with a Democratic administration as its primary investigative targets, uh, is that it can be open-ending. This can literally go on and on. There's no limit on its budgets. There's no limits on its time frame. Uh, so that's part of the problem. And it has been. Look, of course, we have to admit this has been frustrating, um, and it, it has been a diversion from what's important for the American people. I think this is important, too, though. While mainstream media and, and people who live in the Acela Corridor, who generally despise Trump, Trump are pretty obsessed with Russia. Regular Americans are not. Uh, the economy is accelerating. Our border is largely under control. Gorsuch is on the court. Amazing things are happening, and a lot of people appreciate that. And frankly, they don't care a whole lot about the inside baseball of the fact that General Flynn committed a process crime. I'm not excusing it's still a crime. He's going to have to pay a, a price for that. But a process crime, uh, not a crime in action, not anything remotely close to treasonous against the United States. And I'm still confident uh, that in the end, the growth agenda of Donald Trump is going to be so much more important for regular Americans than swamp machinations uh, that at some point even the Democrats are going to tire of this Russia obsession. Steve Cortez today talking about the politics of the matter. We're going to move on to the legal uh, matter now, but Steve, always good to see you. Thank you very much.